All right, what's up guys? Welcome back to 10 Minute Tutorials and today we're gonna cover how to basically attack SSH. Now, this is something that I see people do a lot using tools and that's what we're gonna do, but I'm gonna explain it to uh, what's actually happening because theoretically you could do this manually, it would just take you a very, very, very long time. Now, here we have an, on the left here, we have an Ubuntu server and this server is running SSH and there's an SSH test account that I've created with a simple password that we're going to crack. Now, there is a huge difference between brute forcing a service like this and password cracking. So I want to make that clear because a lot of times I see a lot of people get that confused. You are not actually taking a password hash and trying to break it during this. You are actually physically trying passwords to see if it will log in. Now, one thing, a lot of people attack SSH and don't really understand why SSH is so vulnerable to this attack or why. Um, the main reason is because SSH doesn't typically have a password limit, meaning you can try over and over and over and it's not gonna lock the account out. Now, why is that? Mainly because SSH is a, usually a remote admin tool that they're using to remote into a server. If you allow that to lock up, you may screw the admin out of being able to get into his own server and therefore that's a vulnerability in itself because if I find out the admin account, I can just pretty much lock him out, right? So let's go ahead and hop into it. So here's the server, here is my attack box. Now, what I did is you can see under, we'll go to documents. If I can type, uh, you see I have a word list there. So if I cat the word list, it's only got five passwords in it, so it will find it very quickly. Here is password, password one, two, three. So if you guys aren't familiar with word lists, we can go ahead and show you on Kali Linux and Parrot and many others. There's the rocku.txt, which if you don't know where the rocku.txt file came from, long story short, it was a it was a word list captured from a huge attack and it's very common passwords. Now, you can get word lists all over the place. You can create your own word lists if you're familiar with the person that you're attacking, meaning you did a pen test and they said, hey, here's the people that are in the scope of the pen test. And from there, you're actually getting information about them. You can start creating your own word lists and that's very easy and simple to do. Um, now, I will show you if we go to, or actually, I won't even do that. I'll cat user share word lists, and this is where the rock U text is. Now, if you watch, you can see there is a lot of passwords, and it's just gonna keep going, okay? So those are com very common passwords, right? And there's millions of them. So we're gonna use the little one because otherwise we'd be sitting here for a while, okay? So we're going to go ahead and hit Hydra. Now there's two ways you can do this. You can do it with a login file, or just know the login. Now, we're gonna do it with the, lo we know the login. Now, this would mean that you know the admin account or whatever account you're gonna use, whether it's an admin account. This is not an admin account, so um, this would be if you just know the account, right? That's not that uncommon. It's pretty common to figure out the usernames yourselves. Um, it's pretty easy, especially when you start to do some research on whatever your company target is, whatever. Um, it's pretty easy to figure out because usually it's like a first dot last or something like that type of format. And once you figure one out, you start to build out a pattern of the others and then you just have to figure out who works there, that type of stuff. So pretty easy. So we're going to simulate this scenario as we know the user account. We know um, who we're trying to attack basically, but we don't know the password, right? And we create our own password list on this, but again, you could use your own or use pre-made password lists. It's very common to get pre-made password lists. Um, but I will tell you there's millions of passwords in there and depending on how much um, RAM you have and things like that, depending on how you have it set up, it can take a, a while to, to crack them. Now, it would take my computer even longer because I have three VMs going right now plus the actual operating system because that's the hypervisor I'm using. But you guys, can set it up a million different ways, right? I just want you guys to understand what's actually happening. So when this happens, what's actually happening is 
I am going in and saying, so SSH test is the account that we're um, actually going into. And I have on the left here, I have the IP address to show you guys. So you would type SSH 192.168.1.18. Okay. Now, when I go to log into this, it's going to ask me for the password, right? So now this would literally be me typing in, okay, let's say we type in the wrong password. We type in pass123. Okay. And you can see permission denied. Okay. So now we type password345. Okay. Denied. Now we type, um, you know, whatever. It doesn't really matter what you type, just as long as you get the password incorrect. And you can see that this is coming back and it's saying permission denied. It'll give you three tries and then it kicks you out, right? I could then do it again and I could just keep doing this. And it would take me a very long time to do, you know, a thousand passwords, right? But a computer could do this very, very quickly. And the reason for this is because there's a couple things. Number one, they're going to open multiple threads, as it's called. So that means they're going to not, they're going to try and connect to this several different times at once and put passwords in rather than one at a time like I just did because it does have that delay. Um, some SSH servers will actually delay it even longer so that way it's harder to do this and that type of stuff. So keep that in mind. But that's what's happening when you're watching this. It is literally just putting the password in and seeing if it works. Now, the reason I, keep, I point this out is because this is not to be confused with password cracking which is where you get the hashes and then you try to hash passwords and compare them. That is not what this is doing. This is actually typing the password in and seeing if the computer will take it. Now, the reason I point that out too is because this is actually touching a system, obviously. So therefore it is illegal, right? This is not passive reconnaissance. So let's go ahead and look at our Hydra. So Hydra is the tool we're gonna use. And if you look, we have it here. We're going to use the login option. So we'll go ahead and hit Hydra Tech L for login. And the user we're going to use is SSH test. And then we're going to do a capital P for the password list. And if you remember, the password list is word list. And you can see it there. Now you have to specify the service here because Hydra can do a lot of services for forcing, which is awesome. It's really awesome. Or dictionary tech, whatever you want to call it. So SSH. And then 192.168.1.18. Okay. So now when we hit this, you can see we're just saying, okay, start Hydra. Login name is going to be SSH test. The capital P word list is what we're going to use. And then here's the service we're using, the SSH, and here's the IP address. Now when we hit this, you're not even going to see it do much because it's such a short list. It's going to hit it like that. And you can see boom, it already found it. And that's because it's one of five, right? And that's how fast a computer can do it. And you can see here's our password. Here's our login. So now from here, if you look on the left here, we're in the SSH test Ubuntu's um, home directory. And you can see the only thing they have in there is hidden passwords. Now, is there anything in that? No, I just created it so that you can see that you can gather stuff like this. So what we would do here is we would then go and we would say, okay, we have the password. So we're going to SSH, SSH test is the account name. And we're going to do it at 192.168.1.18. Okay. And then from here, we know the password. So we hit enter and the capital P A S S W R D one, two, three. And look at that. We're now in the actual directory. So now we have access to this box over here simply by brute forcing the password over here. Now, this may seem simple to some people, and I understand that, but a lot of people just use tools and don't understand them. And I want to make sure that we understand what we're doing. We understand that this is just a physical or a quicker way to physically type in the password over and over and over, right? And a lot of people know that, but I wanna make sure that we understand it fully and that you can understand that this attack is very common and this is why you use strong passwords because with that week of a password, I can get in in a matter of two seconds, right? And then now we have full access to this hidden passwords text file, which could have a flag in it, for instance, if you're doing CTFs. So 
Hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Hopefully you guys like the 10 minute tutorials. I am still doing the um, cyber defense path, but I'm trying to mix in the 10 minute tutorials. I want to make sure that if people want to learn something, they can hop in real fast, learn it real quick, and then go try and use it. So that's why I didn't use a try hack me box. I set up the lab myself so that you guys can see it, that it doesn't just work on those boxes. This is a real life attack that can occur and does work. So thanks guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And if you guys are liking the content, make sure you subscribe. Thank you.